Ja, ja, ja. Ich habe von der Brain. In this place. Will also for in this. In the back of a liver. On upper part of it. Then together with nervous vagus. It leaves the skull through for a manubular here. On the neck. Uh, on the level of foramen manubular, it has two enlargement. Named ganglion superiors and ganglion inferiors. Both ganglions are sensory. They consist of pseudonipolar cells. You see that cells. Uh, motor branches innervates only one muscle. Muscular stilopharyngeus. The motor branches. Parasympathetic fibers named nervous tympanicus. Consists of sensory and parasympathetic fibers. Enters to the tympanic cavity through fossilia petrosa. Fossilia petrosa is between foramen angularia and fossa and foramen uh, caroticum. Yeah. Fossilia petrosa in this place. In this place. Enters to the, yeah, to the tympanic cavity and innervates it with parasympathetic fibers. But its sensory fibers from this place goes out to tuba auditiva, auditory tube. Sensory fibers. So uh, it continues with nervous petrosus minor, leaves the tympanic cavity through upper part of the temporal bone. Then it enters to foramen lacerum and there it found a ganglion oticum. The otic ganglion forms the synapse there. And postganglionic fibers moves with nervous auricular temporalis partly and then goes to the parotid gland, innervates it with parasympathetic fibers. You know that nervous fossilis does not innervate the parotid gland, it only penetrates it, but glossopharyngeus innervates it. All other fibers are sensory. Because it forms the plexus. Plexus takes part in the plexus pharyngeus. Pharyngeal plexus consists, consists of sensory and motor fibers, but motor ones are branches of the nervous fibers. Sensory branches of nervous glossopharyngeus. Additionally, it innervates the soft palate ramus palatinus, the tonsils ramus tonsillaris, posterior third of the tongue <coughs> ramus lingualis, pharynx rami pharyngeal, and the glomus caroticus, la ramus glomus caroticus. Glomus caroticus locates in the bifurcation of the carotid artery. The common carotid artery bifurcates into the uh, external one and internal one. Between them is the glomus caroticus. It was nervous glossopharyngeus. Nervous uh, hypoglossus. That was one of the Nucleus spontaneus nervi hypoglossi. Most medial nucleus of the Projected on trigonum nervi hypoglossi. This place. the brain. Nucleus dorsalis nervi hypoglossi. On this place. And nervus hypoglossus. This one. In sulcus anterolateralis, in front of oliva. See? Then it goes from the skull through foramen hip canalis hypoglossalis there. To this place. Canalis hypoglossalis. Goes out. And forms a loop on the neck. You can find it here. And it innervates mainly suprahyoid muscles and muscles of the tongue. Additionally, it communicates with first four nerves of cervical segments. Cervical nerves. That fibrous are mixed on this place and forms a loop. Anza cervicalis its name. This loop lies at the lateral side of 
Neurovascular bundle consists of carotid artery, jugular vein, nervous vagus, and truncus sympathicus. It consists of two roots, radix superior goes from nervous hypoglossus and radix inferior goes from cervical mass. So, internal branches of this loop goes to muscles below the hyoid bone, you see, superior belly of homohyoidus, musculus, sternothyroidus, sternohyoidus, and inferior belly of musculus homohyoidus. Musculus thyrohyoidus innervated the nervous hypoglossus, as well as muscles above the hyoid bone. So for the next classes, uh, nervous hypoglossus, nervous glossopharyngeus, and remember muscles of the tongue and the suprahyoid and the infrahyoid muscles.